Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And a happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers here or play that role in, uh, in people's lives. And uh, it's also another special Sunday here as we begin uh, the next stage in our new beginnings process here at St. Andrews. And we have our, our guest speaker, uh, Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Crawford, who is our new beginnings coach. Uh, he'll be doing most of his work will be behind the scenes after, after uh, the, the workshop that was held on Friday. If you weren't able to be here, be sure to uh, check out the recording on YouTube. I can see a great many of you have already done so. so that's that's great. Uh, and uh, Diane's going to talk a little bit more about about the next. Uh, uh, be sure to sign up for um, for one of the discussion groups. Um, Closer to the microphone. Sorry, I should know that. Um, be sure to sign up for one of the uh, New Beginnings um, small groups. The sign-up sheets are at the back of the church, and I'm sure they'll go down to the gymnasium for coffee hour. But there are lots of options, um, so please um, please find a time, and uh, we look forward to um, seeing you at the groups and uh, participating in the future of our program. Um, so thank you, and, and the other thing I, I do want to mention is please keep this whole thing in prayer. The group leaders um, plus the group meetings, please hold them in prayer. I thank you for that. And so yeah, Diane is one of our group leaders. Uh, Karen and, Lin and Linda and Dave and uh, sorry, Jim and I'm uh, missing somebody. And uh, Edith. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> so we've got, we've got, we've got uh, five great groups, five great leaders. It was certainly a very encouraging process. Uh, it was a good full day yesterday here at the church. If you're not sure about when, whether you can join a group, uh, and before you leave the service today, there, an email sign-up did also go around. So you can check that out. If you didn't get that email, let me know. And we'll, we'll make sure to get that, that link to you. And uh, yeah, and, and again, even if you can't make the first week, you can also sign up to a, a later session too. So again, if you have any questions, you can either talk to myself, talk to, to Ann Hibbs, or talk to any, any of the group leaders and we can, uh, we can get you sorted out. Okay, and now I am going to in, invite Jeff up to lead us in our call to worship this morning. Good morning. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you to worship the, this morning, and I invite you to join with me in our responsive call to worship that you'll see on the screen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Thanks be to God for such great mercy. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Thanks be to God. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation through Christ Jesus. Together we will make a new beginning in Christ. Let us worship God with joyful hearts, trusting God to renew us and all things. We will lift our praises to God with hearts refreshed by grace. A wonderful call to worship as we come to lift our praise before the Lord. Would you please stand with us if you're able? You have the 
join together in a time of prayer. Let us pray, friends. God of all creation, thank you for the wonderful things that you have made. Thank you for the universe full of stars and planets. Thank you for our world full of life. Thank you for making each one of us. Thank you for loving each one of us. Holy God, lover of all your children, the tomb has been opened, and so we dance into your future. Your life has dawned on us, and we surround you with our praise. You reach out your hand and you lead us into joy. Jesus Christ, faithful witness, you pick open the locked doors of our hearts and come to be with us forever. You breathe peace into our souls so that we might bring healing to a troubled world. Holy Spirit, breath of peace. You show us our hearts so that we might give love to others. You show us our hands, sending us to serve those in need. You show us your hope so that we may live in hope and joy. Faithful Trinity, Three in one. We give thanks for St. Andrews, for your faithfulness over the years, and for the company of saints who have followed you in word and in deed. As we gather this day, we ask that you would continue to bless these people, this place, and indeed, this mission. O Holy Trinity, we call to you and name you as eternal, ever present and boundless in love, yet there are times, O God, when we fail to recognize you in our daily lives. Sometimes shame clenches tightly around our hearts and we can hide our true feelings. Sometimes fear makes us small, and we miss the chance to speak truth. Sometimes doubt invades us, and we do not speak of your wisdom. Holy God, in the daily journey from sunrise to sunset, remind us again of your presence hovering near us and in us. Free us from shame and self-doubt. Help us to see you in the moment-by-moment -moment possibilities to live according to your will. Hear us as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue to worship our Savior and King. Would you please stand once more?
On the night you were born, the moon smiled with such wonder. Such wonder that the stars peeked in to see you, and the night wind whispered, life will never be the same. Because there had never been anyone like you ever in the world. So enchanted with you were the wind and the rain that they whispered the sound of your wonderful name. The sound of your name is a magical one. But let's say it out loud before we go on. I invite you to say your name. Ready? Three, two, one. Jeffrey. It sailed through the farmland, high on the breeze. Who in the world is exactly like you? Who? 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 Over the ocean and through the trees. Until everyone heard it and everyone knew of the one and only ever you. Not once had there been such eyes, such a nose, such silly, wiggly, wonderful toes. In fact, I think I'll count to three. Can you wiggle your toes for me? One, two, three. When the polar bears heard, they danced until dawn. And from far away places, the geese flew home. The moon stayed up until morning next day, and none of the ladybugs flew away. So whenever you doubt just how special you are, and you wonder who loves you, how much, and how far, listen for geese honking high in the sky, they're singing a song to remember you by, or notice the bears asleep at the zoo, because they've been dancing all night for you. Or drift off to sleep to the sound of the wind, listen closely, the wind's whispering your name again. If the moon stays up until morning one day, or a ladybug lands and decides to stay, or a little bird sits at your window a while, it's because they're all hoping to see you smile. For never before in story or rhyme, not even once upon a time, has the world ever known to you, my friend, and it never will, not ever again. Heaven blew every trumpet and played every horn on that wonderful, marvelous night you were born. I hope that this story reminds you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I hope that it reminds you that you are unique and have a special contribution to make to the way that we are seeking to live into God's kingdom here in this church and in this community. I hope that you remember how much you are loved, and just how special you are. We are going to present a song now to you. It reminds us of God's faithfulness in the past, for all that he has done in the past, and all that he will do in the future.
chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. I think some well-known uh, verses and, and teaching from Jesus. Beginning at verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 21. Now we're going to read this in the message version, which was uh, uh, a, a take on the scriptures translated and, and paraphrased by Eugene Peterson, a Presbyterian minister, uh, great saint of the church. Uh, if you want to follow along in, in our Pew Bible and, and, and sort of compare Eugene's take on things, uh, it is on page 803, but I, he had a, Eugene Peterson had a, had a wonderful way of bringing fresh light to the scriptures. So let's hear that this morning. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embrace what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it's important that you do not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what He does for us, not by what we are and what we do for Him. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be, without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other, or trying to be something we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help, don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with a disadvantage, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. 
Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply practice playing the second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled in a flame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they are happy. Shed tears when they are down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch, or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to your Father. Let's join our voices in song once again. Please remain seated for this moment. Luther King Jr. said this, Christians are too often like thermometers, registering and reflecting the temperature all around them, when in fact we are called to be thermostats, influencing, changing the spiritual, moral, cultural atmosphere of the society in which we live. Thermostats, regulating, influencing, 
changing, transforming the temperature, the reality of the world. It seems to me as Christians, we're constantly pulled between the ways of God and the ways of the world. We're called to live in Christ, but physically we find ourselves here in this world. In what's become his famous book, a theologian named Reinhold Niebuhr, the book's entitled Christ and Culture, talks about the relationship between these two things. And in the end, he says, Christ is the transformer of culture. That we're to be transformed by the power of God's Spirit living through us. That we're called to be about the transformation of our mind. But it can't just be about the transformation of our minds. The Apostle Paul and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. insist that transformed minds without bodies don't really amount to much. So I can have a transformed mind and think about all these things and meditate on them, but if I'm not doing anything about it with my hands and my feet and my heart. It's really just this sense of pious intellectualism. How many angels can dance on the head of the pen? No, the whole point of transformation is that we might be a discerning people who perceive in our day-to-day -day lives, our everyday, ordinary, walking around lives, what it means to be disciples and what it means to be the church. Now, God has always been in this business of embodied transformation. God's been at work. The Spirit covered and moved over the chaos in the beginning. There was an abundance in the Garden of Eden. Noah's deliverance. A baby named Moses was drawn out of the water. And there was a wilderness. The wilderness was a hard, hard place, and yet there was also growth, and gratitude, and even songs sung in the wilderness. And slaves were set free from an Egyptian prison. Slaves were set free in so many ways. And there was Hannah, with a little son named Samuel. And the story goes on and on and on and continues all the way to life from death in an empty tomb. God is in the business of transformation. Paul, in his letter to the people in Rome, the church in Rome, those first Christians, he spends the first 11 chapters talking a lot about theories, doctrines, and ideas. But here in the 12th chapter, something seems to shift. It's kind of like the rubber meets the road, in a way. We get this practical instruction about how we can live our lives. And what happens in this 12th chapter is it spells out all the implications of living in God's grace and in God's transformation. And quite dramatically, Paul lays out and encourages and challenges the church. I expect that what Paul lays out, that we heard John read this morning, is a task that will take us most of our earthly lives to live into. 
But here's the encouragement to live a life of love. Five significant things the scripture says. One, take your life and place it before God as an offering. Take your whole life and give it to God as an offering. Fix your attention on God. The scripture says we'll be changed from the inside out when we're focused on God. God will bring the very best out of us when we give God our attention. Number two, we are part of an interconnected body. Did you catch that in the story? It didn't really talk about being an individual, so much like our world does, but it reminds us that we're part of a community. We find our function, we find our purpose as it relates to each other, the whole, the family, the body. And it says, be who you were made to be. Don't try to be somebody else. Remember the night on which you were born. Remember how God loves you and claims you and calls you. Focus on the gifts that you've been given. Don't worry about some of the other things. Focus on those gifts. Live into those. Live those gifts out joyfully. The third thing we're encouraged to do is to love from the very center of who we are. Be a good friend. Be a really good friend who loves deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Be reminded that it's actually not about us. It's about God. Number four, serve the Lord and rely on God's Spirit. Be patient. Be open. Don't quit when things get hard. But pray. Pray. Pray when things get difficult. Go to God. And five, extend hospitality to everyone. There isn't like a little asterisk after the everyone and says, not these people. It says, extend hospitality to everyone. Even bless and love your enemies. Be present to people where they're at, not where you hope they might be. Extend friendship to everyone. Discover the deep beauty that lies within everyone. Be generous with your resources. Meet every situation as much as you can with goodness and with love. What a task. What a task, what a calling we've been given. Transformation is not about some big, larger than life, grandiose act or gesture. But transformation is actually about a bunch of seemingly small and insignificant acts. The regular, ordinary, day-to-day -day things done with love. But done genuinely, with hospitality. Small and insignificant acts that in their sum total are transformation. I want to tell you a story this morning. It's a story from about 30 years ago, from a Hawaiian state hospital. And this hospital 30 years ago had a ward for those who were mentally ill. That's how the ward was described at the time, 30 years ago. These were people who had committed some very, very serious crimes. Things on that ward were decaying. It was rather depressing. 
Uh, not a day would pass where there wasn't internal conflict and violence. As the story goes, you know, the place was so bleak that the paint wouldn't even stick on the walls. People kind of walked with their backs against the walls because they were worried about others. And wow, the staff turned around. People quit all the time. Nobody really wanted to work there. And onto the scene arrives a new doctor. Clinical psychologist, Dr. Stanley Hugh Len. Well, the nursing staff thought, here we go. Here's the new guy. New procedures, new challenges. But Dr. Stanley Hugh Len didn't seem to do that. Instead, he just kind of always seemed to be around. He always seemed to be present. He was generally cheerful. Often he had a smile on his face, and even in very challenging circumstances, he was just relaxed. He started to talk to people, to the inmates, to the staff. He got to know them. He read their files. And after some months, he started to talk about something called Hopa Oponopo. Hopa Oponopo. It's the idea that we're 100% responsible for ourselves. It says that we have the power to change our experience of others to change how we experience the world by working on ourselves. And Dr. Stanley Hugh Led would often go around asking this question, what is going on in me that is having me experience another in this way? He would sometimes even go as far as pointing out you know, whenever you're experiencing that challenge or that problem, you're there, you're part of it, you're present in some way. And he started saying this, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, Thank you. Uh, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. There was something cleansing or almost healing about that mantra. It seemed to do something with negativity, with hatred, with resentment. No, not immediately. It was months and months. But little by little, very slowly, all of a sudden things shifted. All of a sudden there wasn't as much violence. Uh, the staff seemed not to be resigning and leaving in droves. Uh, people actually were applying to work on this ward. They were wondering, what's going on here? Inmates' medications were able to be reduced. Dr. Stanley Hugh Lang worked there for four more years until he no longer had a job because every single one of the inmates had been released. Our human action is always divinely inspired by God. <clears throat> Moving towards God's kingdom. Transformed individuals become the transformed community. We who are many are one body in Christ. Transformation changes us from the inside out. In the ups and downs of this journey that we call life, 
Engaging in transformation is not some one and done event, but it's a process. It's a journey. It's a calling. Today we celebrate God's faithfulness. We also celebrate God's faithfulness in this place, here at St. Andrews. I think today and pray about who will experience that transformation in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. Who will experience the love of God, the grace of God, the power of God, because you will take the time. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. After spending this weekend with you, I can say with confidence that God is alive and active in this place in you. God is evoking transformation. Indeed, it is my prayer, my deep prayer, for each of you and for this place that you will continue the good work that has begun in Jesus Christ and that you will be transformed. Be thermostats, my friends, not thermometers. Be transformed. Live transformed. Transform. In the name of the Creator, and the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. journey, we want to enter into covenant today. We want to remind ourselves of this relationship that we enter into as we go on this journey together. And so the church often does that by uh, asking some questions that have responses to it as we go on this journey. And so we want to do that today. And we want to acknowledge today, too, that this New Beginnings um, journey started some time ago with an assessment that has taken place. We had the opportunity to gather together on Friday night and learn. Uh, I had the privilege yesterday of spending time with the small group leaders and some of the elders and John, and we had some great conversation. And we're looking forward to your participation in the small groups. I believe deeply that each and every one of you have something to contribute to those conversations, and that your participation in them is absolutely essential. We believe as a church that we discern the will of God and the mind of Christ better together. So I encourage you to sign up for one of those groups and to participate in that process. And so today as we enter into this covenant, we have these questions that we want to ask you, friends. Will you pray for the new beginnings process through the weeks ahead? Will you support the small group facilitators as they give leadership to this program? Will you participate with an open mind listening for the direction to which God is calling this congregation? Will you be mindful of any resistance to change that may arise for you and welcome new ways to be followers of Christ in this community. Amen. May God bless all of us in these promises that we have made as we go on this journey.
come to God in prayer this morning, we, we keep before us the fact that it is Mother's Day, Christian Family Sunday, and, and the needs in our congregation. We have been praying for a lot of people. Someone we've been praying for for, for quite a long time is Nancy McDivitt. Uh, some of you may will already know that Nancy died yesterday. We hoped that she would get home, and yet we know her faith, so we can say she is home. But we pray for Ross, we pray for their children and grandchildren, and uh, that uh, as uh, arrangements are made for a service, we will, uh, we will let you all know. Uh, also pray for, for Jeff and Laura Dahl. Uh, we prayed for Jeff last week. It looks as if things are approaching their end there as well, so please do uh, pray for, for Jeff and Laura and their family. So let's, let's come to our God in prayer in this time. Oh God, that word alone is so inadequate to who you are, and yet it, it begins us in a direction. You are our creator. You're the God who transforms and rescues and redeems, and in all that you are more personal than any person in our lives. On a day like today, we are reminded that we can call you our parents. More often than the scriptures, we call you Father, and yet we seek of the prophets who speak of you as a mother, holding us in arms, defending us. Indeed, our Lord said that you are like a hen wanting to gather your chicks together. And as an image, as we seek the healing of this world, God, you want to gather us together as one family. And so we pray. We pray for, for mothers this day, for women who have that role in people's lives, who create family. We pray for those who have longed to be mothers and yet could not. We thank you for those who have adopted children. We thank you for those aunts and godmothers and so many others who fill that hole in people's lives. We pray today for those who are grieving the loss of a mother and for those mothers who will always grieve the loss of children. We pray for the many around this world who are carrying out this God-given calling in difficult circumstances. War, poverty, broken relationships, and yet are faithful to all those who are their children. We pray for your church, knowing that so often the church has been given the image of a mother. We pray for your church throughout the world. We pray for your church of St. Andrews here today. Look, God, help us to grow and seek your will in this time. That we would show your love, your passionate, devoted love for each other and for this community that you have placed us in. May we be willing to go you guide us. We pray for those needs in our church community that have been shared with us. As we just named, we pray. We pray for Ross. We pray for Nancy's family. We give you thanks for her life and her ministry with us here through her music and so many other things. We pray for Jeff and Laura. We pray for your peace and comfort and your hope be before them and the rest of the family. We pray for Allison, we pray for Kathy, for Gary, for Bruce, for Margaret, for Alec. We pray for Connie and Joe, for Christy, for Dana, for Donna, for Tom, for Deidre, for Jean and Jean and Jen, and others whose needs have been shared with us that we have been praying for. And now in the silence, Lord, we lift up to you those prayers that you've placed on our hearts which we have not yet spoken. We 
pray all these things in and through the strong, sure, and compassionate name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And pray further as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are going to close with one final song. I'm going to suggest, actually, that we just sing the first verse, okay? And then we'll have more time to sing it again at another time, and more time to fellowship downstairs, and then also for those of you who need to get to family gatherings, we can do that. So let's sing this beautiful hymn together. Would you please stand? Mothers and other special women in your lives. And so go with God's blessing today.